Okay, so let's practice a little bit. Here is a piece of DNA, and we see it's going from 5 prime to 3 prime. So we know that it's going in from left to right in that direction. Now I want you to take a second, and I want you to replicate this piece of DNA. So pause the video and see if you can figure out the sequence that would be on the other strand, the new strand that's being made. Okay, so let's check and see if what you wrote is correct. Here it is. So when there's a T in DNA, we know it's going to be an A in the other strand of DNA. Uh, so when there's a G, we know there's going to be a C in the other strand because that's our complementary base pairing rules. So if our sequence of DNA goes T, 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 A, A, T, G, A, G, C, T, 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 A, A, C, G, C, A, C, A, T, C, A, then we know that the other strand of DNA is going to have the sequence A, 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 T, T, A, C, T, C, G, A, 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 T, T, G, C, G, T, G, T, A, G, T. And remember, because the top strand is going from left to right, that means the bottom strand is going from right to left because DNA is anti-parallel. Now, let's get rid of that piece of DNA, and let's use the piece of DNA remaining as a template strand to make a piece of messenger RNA. So pause the video here and see if you can transcribe this piece of DNA into a piece of messenger RNA. Okay, well hopefully you stop the video. Now remember, it's going to be just the same as replicating the DNA, where A's are going to bind with T's and C's with G's, except we know that there's no thymine in messenger RNA. So whenever you would put in a thymine in the DNA, you're going to put in a uracil in the messenger RNA sequence. So instead, we know if the DNA goes T, 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 in the messenger RNA, T is going to base pair with A. So that messenger RNA is going to have A, 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 and then U, U, because adenine pairs with uracil in messenger RNA. So here you go. Here's the answer to the sequence of messenger RNA. See if you were correct in transcribing your piece of DNA into a piece of messenger RNA. A, 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 U, U, A, C, U, uh, C, G, A, 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 U, U, G, C, G, U, G, U, A, G, U. So that would be the piece of messenger RNA that is created when we use this piece of DNA at the top as the template strand. Now, I want to point out something here, and that's that watch which direction we're talking about here. Again, the template strand goes from left to right, so the forward direction of the messenger RNA is right to left, and that's why I've labeled that end 5 prime and the left end 3 prime. Okay, so always label your end so you know which direction the DNA or the messenger RNA is going in. Now here's that piece of DNA again that we made when we replicated the DNA, and again you'll notice a good way to check is the piece of messenger RNA you make should be the same sequence of the piece of the copy of the DNA that you make. So we can see here that the DNA has A, 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 and the messenger RNA has A, A, A. Now in the DNA we have T, T, but again there's going to be uracils in messenger RNA instead of uh, thymines. So as we go along, we can see that the DNA strand is identical to the messenger RNA strand, except that we have uracil and RNA and thymine and DNA. Now the other thing I want to mention that's very important, okay, so make sure to note this and star it and highlight, is that when you have that piece of messenger RNA, we then read it to figure out the amino acids that are going to be in the protein, but you have to read it in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. So this piece that we made here was 3 prime on the left end, 5 prime on this end, so it's actually going from right to left. Now you could translate it from right to left, but that's a little hard to do because you're doing it backwards. So just resequence it, reorder it. Because if you think about it, it's the same way. This piece here, 5 prime to 3 prime, is exactly the same as the sequence on the bottom. We've just reversed it so that it's in the forward direction, okay? So it's not going backwards, it's going forwards. 
So whereas over here we had the five prime, U, G, A, U, G, U. Now we've just rewritten it so the five prime's over here, and here we go, U, G, A, U, G, U, and we do the entire thing for that entire piece of messenger RNA. So it's really just like if you had a word and it was written backwards, you could rewrite it in the forward direction, and it's the exact same thing, it's just written in the opposite direction. Okay, so you want to make sure that after you have your DNA and you transcribe it into messenger RNA, if it's going in the backwards direction, if the sequence is going three prime to five prime, rewrite it so that it's going in the forward direction from five, five prime to three prime. Because again, that's the important part. That's the way the ribosome is going to bind to it. It's going to bind to the five prime end and then go along that way from five prime to three prime. So here we are with our piece of messenger RNA. And just remember, it has to be in the five prime to three prime uh, direction before you translate it. Okay, so what I want you to do now is I want you to look at your genetic code and figure it out. That piece of messenger RNA that we made, I want you to figure out what the sequence is of the protein. Now let's go back to that piece of messenger RNA. You're going to need to have your genetic code handy, so make sure to have a copy of that around. Um, but I want to remind you that, remember, the ribosome is going to bind to the very first nucleotide, and it moves along one nucleotide at a time, one by one, until it finds that start codon. And what is the start codon? AUG. It's always AUG. So that's going to be the first amino acid of every protein, methionine. So here we can see the first codon it reads is UGA. Is that AUG? A -U -G? No. So it's going to move one. Okay. The next one then is GAU. GAU is not AUG, so it continues to move. AUG. There. That's the start codon. So we know the AUG is going to be methionine. That's the first amino acid. And then it's going to move along to the next codon. So after AUG, we have UGC. And UGC is going to encode the next amino acid that's going to be in the protein. And in this case, if we use our genetic code, go ahead, use your genetic code, what does UGC encode? UGC uh, is going to encode cysteine. So the amino acids so far in this protein are methionine and then cysteine. And the next one is going to be GUU. So pause the video here and see if you can translate this piece of messenger RNA all the way until you find a stop codon. Okay, so just to review, to make sure that you got the same answer as I did, um, AUG is going to be the first codon, that's methionine. Then UGC, that's cysteine. Then valine, lysine, alanine, histidine, and UAA is going to be the stop codon. Okay, UAA is the stop codon, and that's it. The ribosome's not going to continue past that point. So let's do another practice about translating a piece of messenger RNA. Here's our piece of messenger RNA, and it's labeled 5' prime to 3'. Prime. And this is all one big piece, but it didn't all fit on one line, so I had to break it and put it on three lines, but it's all continuous, okay? So I'm going to use my mouse here, and I'm going to follow along, and you tell me when to stop, when you see the start codon up here, okay? Right, there it is, AUG. So AUG is the start codon. So the ribosome went along one nucleotide at a time until it found AUG. And when it hits AUG, it's going to go three by three by three now. Okay, codon by codon by codon. Codons are always three nucleotides in length. So it's going to be AUG and then UCA and then GUC until it finds one of those stop codons, which is UAA, UAG, or UGA. So I'm going to keep going with my mouse. Tell me when you see a stop codon. Okay, let's move to the second line. Ah, right here, UAA. 
Now let's go ahead and see if that's in frame, meaning is that going to be one of the codons that the ribosome reads? Because we start with AUG, the ribosome is going to go three letters at a time. So it's AUG, UCA, CUG, GUC, GAU, CAU, AAA, GGG. So see what happened there? There is a stop code on here, UAA, but it's not in frame. It's actually one letter off from what the ribosome is reading. So it's actually not going to read UAA. It's reading CAU and AAA instead. So it's not going to use that stop codon to stop because it's not a stop codon in this particular situation. So we got to find the next one that's in frame. So we had CAU, AAA, GGG, GGU, CGA, UGA, right, right there, UGA, right? There is the stop codon that the ribosome is going to use. So keep that in mind. There might be a stop codon in the middle of that, but you need to check to see whether the ribosome is going to read that stop codon, the three letters of the stop codon, or whether the stop codon is divided between two of the codons um, that the ribosome is going to read. So this whole piece here, from AUG to UGA, that's the part that's going to be translated. That's the code, the instructions, for what amino acids are going to be found in this particular protein. All right, so here, from AUG to UGA. Now again, another good practice is to stop the video here, use your genetic code copy, and see if you can translate this and figure out which amino acids are going to be found in this particular protein. Okay, so hopefully you figured out which amino acids are going to be found in this particular protein. We know that AUG encodes methionine, UCA encodes serine, CUG encodes leucine, and then go along three by three by three until you get to UGA. And remember, UGA does not encode an amino acid. It encodes a stop factor so that everything stops. Now, the other thing I want to mention about this is you see that the piece of messenger RNA, not all of it is going to be translated. Not all of it is the instructions on how to make the protein. So on the 5' prime end, some of it isn't going to be translated, isn't going to be turned into a protein. We call that the 5' prime untranslated region. And on the 3' prime end, there's a little bit of buffer at the end as well that's not going to be part of the code. We call that the 3' prime untranslated region. So remember, translation means using that part of the messenger RNA to encode the um, amino acids that are going to become part of the protein. And it's only that part that's in the box here that's going to encode the protein. The rest isn't going to be translated. So the 5' prime UTR and the 3' prime UTR. What's the point of this? Well, these are buffers. They help to protect the messenger RNA. It allows for a place for the ribosome to actually bind on the 5' prime end before it scans down that piece of messenger RNA. So these are some of the reasons why that's the, there's a little bit. But you could think of it like if you're reading a book, this is like the preface at the beginning. It's not part of the meat. And then maybe at the end there's an appendix, and that's not part of the meat of the story as well.